What is it, Latham? Well, it's nearly 10 o'clock, Inspector. Mm. I have a carriage waiting. Carriage? What carriage? You wanted to have a look at that place in the park this morning, don't you recall, sir? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. I found it a nuisance spending one's time on routine investigations. Oh, I'd hardly call this routine, sir. What would you call it? Why, well, I'd say it was highly unusual. A man being attacked by a werewolf in a London park. Werewolf? I'm surprised at you, Latham. I always looked upon you as an intelligent man. Where on earth did you get this werewolf idea? I know, you've been looking at the papers. Well, they are full of it, sir. Bosh, from what I understand of the case, the man was nipped by a stray dog. Oh, it was much worse than that, sir. He was very badly slashed. And he swears that it was not an animal that attacked him. Well, ah, I suppose he was accosted by a man who suddenly sprouted hairy ears and long fangs. No, sir, no ears and no fangs. As a matter of fact, it wasn't a man. It was a woman. A little early in the morning to be visiting grog shops, isn't it? Oh, sir, I never touch a drop before six o'clock in the evening. Come along. Yes, sir. Fine morning, isn't it? Much too fine to be wasted on minor things like stray dogs. Well, Miss Allenby, are you prepared to accept defeat gracefully? You haven't defeated me yet, Mr. Lanfield. <laughs> We're certainly formal this morning, aren't we, Phyllis? <laughs> yes, we are. Much too formal for two people who are going to be married next week. Next December. Next week. This race is merely a formality. You sure you don't want the handicap I offered you? No, thank you. All right. Do you mind if I review the terms of the race? Just to refresh your memory. As a lawyer, I don't want any loopholes. I'll save you the trouble, sir. We race to the road in the Glen, and the winner names our wedding day, which will be next December because I'm going to win. And I adore winter weddings. And I detest them. That's why I'm going to win. You ready? Ready. Start counting. One, two, three, go! Go! Well, Miss Allenby, I won fairly and squarely, and next week you become Mrs. Barry Landfield. You should have taken that five-length handicap I offered you. Oh, I'm glad I didn't, Barry. You see, I, I didn't really want to wait till next December. You didn't? Uh -huh. You see, all oh, their woman's footprints, Inspector. There's no doubt about it. You see, she came along the meadow and probably went through this hedge. You know, that fellow might have been telling the truth about a female werewolf attacking him. Stop that nonsense about a werewolf attacking anybody. Yes, I'm sorry, sir. There's a the way we can get through this brush. Uh, here's the spot, sir. All right, well, have a look on the other side. Yes, well, let me help you, sir. Thank you. Here you go. What's the matter, Phyllis? You look frightened. Oh, those voices startled me. Shall we go? Yes, now that we have an audience, the spell is broken. We seem to have interrupted a romantic moment. Mm. You know, when I was courting my missus, we used to go horseback riding. Did you? Yeah. And then we got married and she refused to go near a horse from that moment on. She only pretended to like riding until she got me well hooked. <laughs> when you're quite finished mooning about your courting days, perhaps we can get on with the business in hand. Yes, I'm sorry, Inspector. Yes. Um, come on. You look very thoughtful. Well, I have many things on my mind. After all, I'm to be a bride next week. That's not what's troubling you. Are you upset because of what the constables were saying? Well, frankly, I am. It's not a very comfortable feeling to know that such weird things are taking place in a park so close to where one lives. <laughs> Certainly you don't believe those newspaper stories about werewolves. That's just sensational trash, the sort of thing one reads in Penny Dreadful. If one reads Penny Dreadfuls, you don't read them, do you? 
Oh, of course not. It's just that I, well, I guess I'm on edge because, well, there's no man in our house. Your worries will be over next week when you move into my diggings. In the meantime, I don't think you'll be roaming the park at nights. Not if I can help it. Miss Carroll. Will you do something for me while you're doing the marketing? Of course, miss. Is it that you want me to fetch something? No. I want you to deliver something. Please leave this at the chemist on the corner near the greengrocer. Just say that someone will call for it this afternoon. Will you do that? Oh, so it's Cupid I'm playing this fine morning. Yes. <laughs> and the note is very important. Oh, they always are at your age. <laughs> Don't fret. I'll see that it's delivered quickly. Thank you very much, Anna. Oh. Anna. Yes, Mrs. Winthrop. Is there something else you thought of for me to bring from the market? No. I'll take that note Carol handed to you. Note? What note? Quickly. I saw you put it in your basket. But, Mother, it's only a... I'll see what it is. Give it to me before I lose patience and discharge you. I'm sorry, Miss Carol. Run along and do your marketing. Hmm. I thought so. Mother, you've no right to... To keep you from making a fool of yourself over a worthless fellow like Dwight Severn? Is that what you were about to say? I love Dwight. And he's not worthless. He's fine and sweet and considerate and... And hasn't a penny to his name. Come in the house, Carol. I want to talk to you. down. I'm certain you imagine yourself madly in love with a starving young artist of yours. But have you given any thought to what happens to us the moment Phyllis marries Barry Landfield? I imagine things will go on pretty much the same. Of course, we'll miss her. It's not as simple as that, Carol. That's why I'm delving into the past now. To tell you of certain things I probably should have explained to you long ago. The reason I haven't told you is that your happiness has always been uppermost in my mind. First, I think you should know you're not Phyllis's cousin. You're not related to her in any way. I don't understand. You're her aunt and... No. I'm not related to her either. I'm only the woman who might have married Reginald Allenby. Reginald Allenby? Phyllis' father? Yes. This is the note he sent me the day before I married your father. Read it. My own darling, I know that nothing I can say will change your mind. I wish you every happiness, even though my heart tells me I shall never quite get over loving you. Reggie. Of course he did get over it. Disappointed suitors generally do. He married Phyllis's mother just one year after I married your father. A man as penniless as the precious young man you wished to marry. And when your father died, leaving me with a small child and practically no money, I had to fend for myself. That's how I happened to become the housekeeper of the Allenby's London house. This house. This house isn't ours? No, it belongs to the Allenby estate, meaning Phyllis, because she's the only heir. Stop it! Go away! Go away! Stop it! 
here wrong. You know, I really can't understand it. He's so gentle around everyone but Phyllis. He was anything but gentle a moment ago. Why don't you get rid of them, Mrs. Winthrop? I bought them for protection. You know what's been going on in the park. Perhaps if Phyllis tried to make friends with them. Talk to him, Phyllis. Let him know you're not afraid of him. There might be something in what she says, darling. Try petting him. See what happens. No, no. Take him away, please. Very well, my dear. Come along. I lock him in the garden. I'm sorry I'm such a coward, Barry. I don't blame you for being afraid the way he was carrying on. Oh, Aunt Martha, you startled me. I'm sorry, Phyllis. I heard you staring about, and I thought I'd just look in and say good night. What in the world is that? It's a lantern. But why did you hang it out there? I thought it might keep the dogs from making such a racket. They've been at it all evening. Come now, my dear. You can tell me the truth. What do you mean? I'm familiar with that old Scottish superstition of hanging out a lighted lantern when dogs howl to drive away the evil spirits. But you're far too intelligent to believe in anything so silly. Am I? I wonder. Certainly you are. Oh, leave it there. But why? Why? Because I want it there. Isn't that reason enough? Just as you say, dear. Wait. Aunt Martha, I'm sorry. Just that I'm all on edge. Those dogs in their constant howling are driving me frantic. And, and the things that have been happening in the park. And... You poor child. You really are upset, aren't you? You mustn't let yourself go to pieces like this. Now get into bed. I'll fetch you some warm milk from downstairs. You'll sleep so soundly you won't even hear the dogs. Into bed with you. I'll only be a minute. going? Answer my question. I was going out for a breath of air. It was stuffy in my room. Why do you lie to me? You were stealing out of the house to meet Dwight Severin. Go to your room. At once.
Here you are, darling. Drink it. And let's forget all about your nerves being on edge. Oh, thank you, Aunt Martha. That's very sweet of you. Dismal sound, ain't it, Herbert? Like lost souls looking for a place to rest. Nothing quite as fancy, Alfred, if you ask me. More like lost wolves looking for someone to tear to pieces. Yeah, it's horrible, ain't it? They do say the owling of a dog means death. Well, in that case, half of London must be a death store at this minute. That's no dog. Sounds like a child here. Come on. Why, Phyllis, what's the matter? It happened. I knew it would happen. What are you talking about? Look. The slippers are covered with mud. Yes. And the hem of my robe, it's wet. It's as though I'd been walking in wet grass. But you couldn't have been out. Blood on my hands. Oh, Aunt Martha, what have I done? Where did I go last night? Stop it, Phyllis. You couldn't have been out. It's impossible. My hands, the rope, the slippers. And I had the most horrible dream. I was walking on a desolate moor at night. I was stalking someone to kill him. Oh, it's the Allen B. curse. I'm sure of it. Nonsense. There's no such thing. If there isn't, I must be subject to spells of insanity. I know you're upset, Phyllis, but you're not insane. Now, get dressed. Come down to breakfast. Act as if nothing has happened. We don't want Carol to suspect that anything's wrong. Understand? You don't look well this morning, Miss Phyllis. Is something ailing you? Phyllis is perfectly well, Hannah. Now run along and fetch Carol's breakfast. She'll be down in a minute. Just as you say, ma'am. Do you think Hannah suspects? Of course not. But she stared at me so strangely. Be quiet. Good morning, Mother. Phyllis. Good morning, dear. Good morning, Miss Carol. Good morning, Hannah. Oh, how dreadful. What is it, Carol? A small boy was killed last night in the park near Denham Lane, torn to pieces by an animal of some kind. Denham Lane? Why, that's close by here. Yes, just a short way. Less than a mile, I'd say. Not more than half a mile, if you ask me. Hannah, get some more tea. Well, what are you waiting for? Get it. Yes, it seems that the body of the child was horribly mangled. Oh, Carol, please! Help me get her up this.
Hello, Barry. Good morning, Carol. Is Phyllis ready? I promised I'd drive her to the dressmakers this morning. I'm afraid she can't go with you, Barry. Why not? She's ill. Not too ill to receive a visitor, I hope. I don't know. I'll go to her room and ask her. Come in. I just can't live with myself knowing that I murdered that child. You murdered no one. Now, you must stop talking about it or even thinking about it. The idea that a frail girl like you could literally tear a boy of ten to pieces is utterly ridiculous. I wish I could believe that. Is that you, Carol? Yes, Mother. What is it? Barry's here. I explained that you were ill and he wants to see you. Shall I have him come up? Oh, no. No, don't let him come up. Tell him I can't see him. I never want to see him again. You can't possibly mean that, Phyllis. Of course she doesn't mean it. Explain that she's sleeping and ask not to be disturbed. Tell him she'll be able to see him tomorrow. Oh, but I won't be able to see him tomorrow. I'm positive you will, my dear. Drink this. It will calm your nerves. Please, Phyllis. You're keeping Barry waiting, Carol. I'm never going to see Barry again, Aunt Martha. I just couldn't. I'd feel... I'd feel unclean. Hannah. Oh, what are you doing here, Mr. Barry? Not so loud. Go on with your work. I want to ask you some questions. How's Phyllis this morning? She seems much better, sir. She's in the garden now, getting some sun. That's strange. Mrs. Winthrop told me she was too ill to see me. She's been telling me that for two days now. Mrs. Winthrop is peculiar, if you ask me. Only don't tell her I said so. I won't if you'll let me go through here to the garden. Go ahead. What's holding you? Well, if you get caught, I swear I never set eyes on you. And I'll confirm it. Hello, darling. Barry, how did you get here? I'll tell you about that later. First, I want to talk to you. Why have you been avoiding me, Phyllis? I've been trying to see you for the past two days. Is there any way to treat the man you're going to marry next Wednesday? Barry, please. I can't talk about it now. Phyllis, what's the matter? It's Barry. Will you please ask him to go? Barry, I didn't know you were here. Where did Phyllis go? I've got to talk to her. You'd better not. You've upset her enough already. How could I have upset her? I merely walked into the garden and asked her why she'd been avoiding me. Perhaps she's been avoiding you because she didn't want you to see her while she was ill. She's a sensitive girl. Don't force the issue when she's feeling as she does now. What's wrong with her, Mrs. Winthrop? What's come over her? You'd think a girl about to be married would be in great spirits. It's just a case of nerves. I'm sure it's nothing serious. In a couple of days, when she's feeling better, she'll be a different person. In the meantime, I'll take good care of her. You'd better go now. Hello, Barry. Good afternoon, Carol. I know. You've been calling on the bride-to-be. How is she? I wish I knew. Carol, will you come for a drive with me? I'd like to talk to you. All right. Good evening. Are you the lady of the house? I'm a lady, but I only work here. 
Who are you? My name is Latham, Criminal Investigation Department, Scotland Yard. Whoa, come in. Yeah. I'll call Mrs. Winthrop right away. Yeah, well, don't bother. You can give me the information I want. Uh, how many people live in this house? Four. Mrs. Winthrop, her daughter, her niece, and myself. No men? Not a man. Mm. Uh, are there any dogs about the place? Yes, indeed. And vicious beasts they are. Every night they keep me awake with their barking and howling. You'd be doing me a great favor if you'd take them away. That's what you'd be doing. Mm. It's a gentleman from Scotland Yard asking about the dogs. Latham's the name, ma'am. How do you do? I'm Mrs. Winthrop. That will be all, Hannah. I presume all dogs are under suspicion in view of the strange happenings in the park. If you wish me to get rid of them, I... Oh, I had nothing like that in mind, Mrs. Winthrop. I imagine that you keep them for protection. I can't say that I blame you with no men about the place. I don't suppose you allow the dogs to roam at large. Certainly not. They're locked in the garden most of the time, especially at night. Hmm. Um, have you noticed any suspicious characters about the place? No, I haven't. Uh, tell me, have the police any clue as to who murdered that boy in the park? Well, not exactly a clue, as you might say. Of course, we've narrowed it down to where we feel certain that it's an animal from this neighborhood or a person. A person? Well, uh, my own theory, Mrs. Winthrop, is that it's a weird... <clears throat> uh, that a madman or a woman is responsible. And that's why I'm checking all the houses in this neighborhood. So if you do see any suspicious characters, notify the police at once, won't you? I certainly will. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Rem. Good night. Good night. you mind? Of course not. I'm glad you're still up. I want to talk to you. What are you doing with the cotton? Oh, I, I'm stuffing my ears so I won't hear those awful dogs. Before you shut yourself off from the world entirely, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Not at all. Did you ever notice what nice, broad shoulders I have? What do you mean? We've been confiding in each other for years. Isn't there something you'd like to tell me? No. Why do you ask? I went riding with Barry this afternoon, and we talked about you most of the time. We both feel that the thing that's upsetting you is more sinister than howling dogs. If you tell me what it is, perhaps I can help. Thanks. But there's nothing you can do. There's nothing anybody can do. All right. But sometimes it's bad to keep things to oneself. I'm keeping nothing from you, Carol. It's, it's just that I'd like to be left alone, that's all. Forget that I mentioned it. I won't bring it up again. I'm sorry, Carol. I didn't mean to be nasty. Please forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. But if you ever do want to unload your troubles, remember what I said about these broad shoulders of mine. And Barry has a nice set of shoulders, too. Thank you.
What did Carol want? She just dropped in to say good night. I thought perhaps she brought you a message from Barry. She went riding with him this afternoon. Yes, I know. I brought the coffee you asked for, but I think you're making a mistake drinking it this time of night. You won't sleep a wink. That's exactly why I'm having it. I don't intend to sleep. I'm going to fight this thing. I'm going to make sure I don't leave the house tonight. Aren't you being a little foolish? Rest will do you more good than anything else. It's no use, Aunt Martha. My mind's made up. As you wish. Good evening, sir. Yes, well, now, these are your reinforcements. Inspector Pierce wants the park patrolled by officers traveling in pairs until further notice. Uh, very good, sir. Mm. Uh, you men paired off with the regular patrolmen. They'll show you the ropes. Thank you. All right. I say, Constable, what's your theory about these strange goings on? Well, there are quite a few stray dogs roaming the parks these nights. I'm sure that one of the bolder ones has been attacking the people. Oh. Yeah, well, that's the inspector's theory, too. Has it ever occurred to you that it might be a werewolf? You're pulling my leg, aren't you? There are no such things. Right. Well, the inspector thinks that, too. Well, good night. Good night, sir. Anything new? No, sir. Everything is comparatively quiet. With the exception of a few dogs, are At the rate we're rounding them up, there'll be no dogs to owl tomorrow night. I suppose you're still of the opinion that when the park is cleared of the dogs, the attacks will stop. Oh, certainly, sir, aren't you? I'm not so sure. Well, um, see you later. Well, there's a balmy one. He's an idea there's a werewolf at the bottom of all this. Bomb is what I call it, too.
you get in here? Through the door, of course. But I had it locked. It wasn't locked, Phyllis. Oh, it's happened again. What have I done? I don't know. The new white dress is torn and muddy. your shoes. Compose yourself. Is that you, Carol? Yes, Mother. May I come in? Certainly, dear. Good morning, Phyllis. Good morning, Carol. Barry's downstairs. He suggested we go riding with him. Oh, will you tell him I'm not up to it this morning? Of course. But won't you see him for just a few moments? He's terribly worried about you. No, I can't see him. She had a very restless night. She's in no condition to have visitors. That's not going to be much consolation for Barry. Any message you'd like me to give him? No, no message. By the way, have you heard the news? What news? A Scotland Yard man was murdered in the park last night by a mad woman who made a noise like an animal. The morning paper is full of it. I murdered him. Hush, child, you did nothing of the kind. I know I did. I'm going to a doctor. I can't stand this any longer. You'll do nothing of the sort. I won't permit it. Why, if you told your story to a doctor, he'd have you committed to an asylum. You don't want that, do you? No. No. <laughs> Look, that must be the place where the Scotland Yard man was murdered last night. I suppose so. You know, if I could only talk to Phyllis, I'm sure that I could get her to tell me what's wrong. Then why don't you? How can I? Your mother insists she's too ill to see me. Haven't you ever overruled a woman? Daddy. Good morning, Mrs. Winthrop. Won't you come in? Carol's in the garden, if you'd like to see her. I didn't come to see Carol. I'm going to take Phyllis for a drive in the country. You must be joking. She's much too ill to leave the house. Suppose we let her be the judge of that, Mrs. Winthrop. See here, you can't go upstairs. Why not? Phyllis is going to be my wife. I insist on seeing her. I'm sure she'll refuse to go with you. Cheer up, Soberside. After all, this is better than moping in bed at home. Isn't it? Yes, I suppose it is. Ooh. You don't know what a relief it is to see you perking up. It's good for you to get away from that house. 
I wonder why your Aunt Martha was so insistent I couldn't see you. Aunt Martha was acting for my own good, to protect me. To protect you from what? Look, darling, I know something's been bothering you, and I want you to tell me what it is. It isn't anything so serious. We can't overcome it together. After all, we are going to be married. We can't be married, Barry, ever. Why not? I, I can't tell you that. It's, it's just that it wouldn't be fair to you. I think I understand. You're not going to let me in for the curse of the Allenbys and all that sort of thing. Is that it? How did you know? Carol mentioned you're being so frightened of howling dogs here of late, and I merely added up the facts. Oh, please, let's not talk about it anymore. We've got to talk about it, Phyllis. You can't let yourself go to pieces over a thing like that. I'm sure you place no stock in that silly legend about your family being cursed by the wolves. I'm not sure. I know you scoff at the Allenby curse, but ever since my parents were killed, I've had the strangest dreams. Dreams in which it seemed I lived a long time ago. I took part in pagan rites. I assumed the form of a wolf. I even hunted with the wolves. Those dreams are easily explained. Someone probably told you weird stories about the Allenby curse when you were a child. Certainly you don't believe in werewolves, do you? Many people do. There was an ancient tribe, the Herpany, which worshipped wolves. Well, that was centuries ago. Yes, but even today in Scotland, on nights when the dogs howl, people hang out lighted lanterns to ward off evil spirits. You've evidently been reading up on the subject, haven't you? Yes, I have. Plato and Pythagoras on the transmigration of souls, I suppose. Yes. Don't tell me you've overlooked Shakespeare. Let's see, a merchant of Venice, wasn't it? Thou almost makes me waver in my faith to hold opinion with Pythagoras that souls of animals infuse themselves into the trunks of men. Thy currish spirit governed by a wolf who hanged for human slaughter even from the gallows did his fell soul fleet, and whilst thou layest in thy unhallowed dam, infused itself in thee. For thy desires are wolfish, bloody, starved, and ravenous. <laughs> Mary, oh, stop it. Oh, darling. I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize it would hit you like this. I'm so terribly frightened. Hold me tight, awfully tight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking personal charge tonight. These are my orders. You are to arrest any person, man or woman, who cannot give a satisfactory reason for being in the park. Furthermore, if anyone tries to avoid questioning by running away, you are to shoot after a single command to halt. You've been provided with firearms for this emergency. I'll we'll start patrolling at once. All right, men. To your posts. I think I'll take a turn in the park myself, Constable. Very good, sir. Right.
Good evening. Hold on, sir. What are you doing in the park at this hour? Frankly, I'm doing a little private investigating. Planning to capture the she-wolf single-handed, I presume? Something like that. These weird stories in the newspapers fascinate me. Yeah, I'll have to trouble you for your name. My name is Barry Landfield. Your occupation? I'm a barrister in partnership with my father. Not Sir Sidney Landfield? Yes. Any credentials to prove it? Certainly. Sir? I was sitting on that bench, and this woman, or whatever it was, howled in there and grabbed me by the throat. There! There she is now. After her, man! After her! Did you get a look at her face? Oh, no, I, I was much too busy protecting myself. She seemed terribly strong for a woman. Dwight, what happened? I was waiting for you to show up, and this wolf woman evidently decided to make me her next victim. You poor darling. Are you badly hurt? Pretty badly messed up, but nothing serious. Barry. Hello, Karen. What are you doing here? I might ask you the same question. Dwight just answered that. I came here to meet him. Dwight, this is Barry Landfield. Barry, Dwight's Everett. How do you do? Hello. Yeah, just to make things cozy, I'm Constable Ernie Odds. Now that we all know each other, suppose we go to Park Patrol headquarters and get acquainted with the inspector. He might have a few questions to ask, too. Now, come on, now. Barry. Good evening. Come in. I'll run upstairs and see if Phyllis is able to see you. Later. First, I'd like to ask you some questions. My, you sound serious. I am. Shall we go into the library? Certainly. You may cross-examine me, Barrister, but do you mind if I sit down while you're doing it? I think much better when I'm sitting down. What I'm going to ask you will require a bit of thinking. Quick thinking. Did you know that I saw you leave the house last night and followed you to the park? So that's how you happened to be there when I met Dwight. Yes. And that's also how I happened to discover that you were the she-wolf. Perry, you must be joking. No, I'm quite serious. You can't possibly be serious, Barry. But I am. Of course, you may not recall everything you did. Insane people seldom do when under stress. I'm perfectly sane, and I was under no stress. I went to the park for only one reason, to meet Dwight Severin. I've been meeting him on an average of three nights a week for the past two months. You're certain you went directly to the meeting place? I'm certain. Do you mind if I ask a question? Go ahead. How did you happen to see me when I left the house last night? I was worried about Phyllis. I decided to watch the house all night. Something she said when we were riding yesterday made me think that... You suspect that she might be the she-wolf, don't you? I did. Until I saw you steal out of the house. Now I don't know what to think. Good evening, Barry. Good evening, Mrs. Winthrop. Why didn't you let me know Barry was calling, Carol? I would have made you a cup of chocolate. I'll make it now. Well, please don't bother, Mrs. Winthrop. I just dropped by hoping I might see Phyllis. I'm afraid you can't, Barry. She's been terribly upset since you took a riding yesterday afternoon. I don't know why it is. 
But you seem to be a disturbing influence. Perhaps you'll feel better in the morning. I'll drop around again then. Good night. Good night. You little fool. I heard you say you've been meeting Dwight Severin three times a week. All right, Mother. You know now. I've been seeing Dwight, and I'm going to continue to see him. And please don't lecture me again on why I should marry Barry Lanfield. In fact, I'll be very happy when he and Phyllis are married. It will stop you from making him a constant topic of conversation. Barry will never marry Phyllis. She's insane. May I come in, Carol? I must talk to you. Surely, do come in. Well, I see you've decided to make a bold front of it, instead of sneaking out to meet your starving artist. I'm not going to meet Dwight, Mother. I'm going to get the police. The police? But why? Phyllis has just told me the whole story. What are you talking about? Her belief that she's a werewolf. She showed me all the evidence, too. Well, at least you know now that I was speaking the truth when I said she's insane. I don't believe she is insane. I think she's the victim of a terrible hoax. That's why I'm going to ask the police to investigate. That's ridiculous. If you call in the police, Phyllis will be placed in an asylum. I'm calling them at her request, Mother. I brought you a glass of warm milk. I don't believe I'll have any, Aunt Martha. You must drink it. It'll quiet your nerves. You want to be completely at ease when you tell your story to the police. You know about Carol calling the police? Certainly, my dear. And I'm glad you've decided to bring everything out into the open. To clear up this terrible thing, whatever it is. It's been quite a strain on me, too. Drink it, Phyllis. The police will ask you hundreds of questions. Do you think they'll take me away tonight? Probably not. Perhaps you won't even have to go to an asylum. Maybe we can arrange to have you taken care of in a private institution until you're cured. Take some more milk for this. Drink it all.
Do you think I can be cured? Of course. Doctors accomplish wonders with the human mind. Finish it, dear. I'll take the glass. How do you feel? Answer me, how do you feel? I feel terribly sleepy. As if I'd been drugged. You're right. I drugged you. So I wouldn't hear the dogs? No, Phyllis. I'm going to kill you. Kill me? Yes. Yes. You see, if the police came while you were still alive, they would investigate the strange story you would tell them. They would call in a doctor. And he would find that you were perfectly sane. So I'm going to kill you. But why? Because I planned all this to get you out of the way. When I discovered you still believed in the curse of the Allenbys, I decided to drive you insane. It would mean much to me and to Carol. For me, it would mean I could stay on here in this house I love that I managed for so many years. For Carol, it would mean that she could marry a man not beneath her station, a man like Barry Lanfield, who... So I began by killing the little boy in the park. Led you to believe you did it. Oh, Dad, oh. Later, I killed that meddling fool from Scotland Yard because he was getting too close to the truth. And my plan will still succeed, Phyllis. Although it's changed slightly. And the police come. I shall tell them of your strange actions lately. Barry and Carol bear me out. They were called it suicide, my dear. Through fear of insanity. <laughs> Hannah! I heard you. Now I know what you've been doing with that drug you kept hid in my kitchen cupboard. Be quiet. No! I'm going for the police. What's happened here? Mother! She's a murderer. It's the she-wolf herself. Phyllis. Phyllis, are you all right? It's Barry, darling. She's going to kill me. She killed the others. No, dear. She'll never kill anyone else. 